Hi, this is Garrett Wong, and I played Ensign Kim on Star Trek Voyager, and you're listening to Neil Before Pod. Neil Before Blog presents... Neil Before Pod. Hello and welcome to another Neil Before Pod flashcast. This time we're talking about the San Diego Comic Con Star Trek Discovery trailer because, you know, we like Star Trek. So we've got some able bodied crewmen with us. Uh, Chris, first time on a Star Trek flashcast, welcome. Hello. Nick, a veteran of the Star Trek flashcast. Hello. And Sandy, another veteran of the Star Trek flashcast. Hello. Welcome so on. Am I the red shirt in this situation then? Uh, someone may die. We don't know. <laughs> no spoilers. <laughs> I don't know who I'm going to kill yet, so it's fine. Yeah. Anyway, a new trailer for Discovery that came at Comic Con because Comic Con is is the gift that keeps on giving. I mean, I'm sure as we're talking, we're missing like so many things that are amazing and interesting and nerdy. Uh, but Star Trek. Um, who wants to go first with their initial thoughts on? On this trailer. I nominate the new guy. The new guy. Yeah, hey, go for it. Go, Chris. Oh, am I the new guy? Excellent. Okay. Um, <laughs> I really, really like this trailer. I mean, this is the first sort of proper full length one we had. The first was sort of a little teasery thing of the ship. And uh, then we got a little bit more, and this sort of fills it out quite a bit. It looks very action packed <laughs> in comparison to the regular sort of Star Trek TV canon that we're used to so yeah it really excites me this yeah um i think it looks great myself um it it looks very modern you know the the visual effects look more like battlestar galactica than they do what we expect from star trek but hey it's the 21st century and you know this is the first star trek series for the 21st century um i think the action-packed thing will be the first episode will be full of action and then it will slow down for a few episodes after that that's my thinking. I think most of this footage is from the first episode, if not all of it. So that's that's my take on it. Loved it. I thought it was great. <laughs> um, I have absolutely no problems with them updating the look of things. I think... I, I, I'm a diehard, I guess. I'm a diehard fan. I've been a fan since the 70s. Um, and I have lived through TNG coming on the scene, which at the time I hated, and in hindsight that was pretty stupid. Um... <laughs> You know, I've heard all the arguments about changing... I mean, I remember the first time they changed the Klingons. You know, things get updated. I absolutely am on board with what they're doing. Having said that, if I see it, if the writing isn't there, if the acting isn't there, okay, fair enough, they may lose me. But at the moment, I'm absolutely on board with what they've done. And I love some of the designs we've seen. The phases, the communicators, they look amazing! Absolutely, totally on board. Love it. Can't wait to see it. Excellent. Optimism. Love it. You know, what, what can I add to that, really? Uh, I'm more or less on the same uh, page as uh, Nick there. I really don't have anything more to add other, other than, yeah, I liked liked what I'm seeing. Uh, it's definitely uh, definitely different. That I'll, I'll give them that. Um, why they're still trying to market it as Prime Universe, I don't know. When it's quite obvious a reboot, I don't have a problem with a reboot. But it's it's the the look and feel of it is much more Kelvin verse than it is Prime. But yeah, well, I'm looking it's forward not to it. a reboot. It's a visual reboot. It's still the intent is still to be in continuity. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I think I, they, I, I, I think, think they're, they're saying that to keep us that. happy. People could have argued that TNG was a reboot. Well, you know, people do, and and people do. But I I take them at their word. As far as I'm concerned, it's in continuity. They've updated the visuals of it. They have to update the visuals of it. Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm good with it. I don't have a problem. If it's if it is set anywhere other than the, the original Prime Universe, I will happily admit I'm wrong. But at the moment, I take them at their word on that one. And whether it is or one isn't, thing, doesn't really make that much difference. I mean, does it? It just depends. Is what we're watching over the 15 episodes going to be any good or not? I think exactly. That's, I, I think that's job Absolutely. one. Absolutely, absolutely. I just don't want them. Like how they think that they're trying to pull the wool over our eyes. Yeah, I don't think they are trying to pull the wool over their eyes. I think they've been quite honest about what their intentions are. If we find out they'll 
that that's not the case later. I'll maybe I'll change my tune, but for the time being, I I take them at their word. Well, it's like what you said in the last uh, one when we talked about the last trailer, Nick, about the uh, uh, the comic book artist type thing. You know, the the different Star <clears throat> Trek series could be seen as different comic book artists drawing it in a different way. You know, but it is still the same thing. Um, I quite like that idea. I, 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 I still kind of feel that way. To be fair, I stole that off of John Cooley um, <laughs> from Anovos. He posted that suggestion. I thought, actually, that's really, really good. But, um, yeah, I still feel that way, and I think that's a good way of looking at it. Again, you know, Sandy could be right. Maybe we're being misled. I don't think that's the case. But you know what? We'll find out in a couple of months. Yeah. Almost well, exactly two months. Indeed. One thing, actually, I did want to say that I took away from the trailer that I really, really liked. Um, there's just that little bit at the end between Lorca and um, Burnham where he says, you know, you helped start a war, don't you want to help me try and end it? And just that whole... And I just get the impression that this is not about fighting a war. It's about trying to stop a war. So it's not. I don't think it's going to be so much a war story as a story about trying to find peace. And I don't think, well, there's a lot of action in the trailer and there's clearly going to be a lot of action in the series. I don't think this is going to be so much a shoot 'em up as in, I think it's going to be quite an optimistic, optimistic piece of storytelling. And I don't think it's going to be a case of action and blowing things up for the sake of having action. And to be fair to DS9, which was a great show, they often did a lot of kind of gratuitous action, as did, frankly, all the TNG movies and the original series movies and, frankly, all the Kelvinverse movies. <laughs> frankly, all the movies. Yeah. Yeah, one thing that has me concerned, though, is them saying that uh, it's going to be... It's, it's going to have the same kind of atmosphere and whatnot as Game of Thrones. I'm like... Uh, n- n- uh, when I'm I heard not sure. that, I'm like, well, no, that's I, I, not what Star Trek is. I wouldn't have take to that, that in quite the kind of. I, I, I'm not sure you take. Uh, I'm not sure that's quite the meaning they meant, though. I think what they meant was they were saying, you know, nobody's safe. Any of the characters may die. There's risk to these characters. There's an ongoing story, and I think they meant it from that kind of world building. It's not safe, kind of view. Not this is going to be exactly like Game of Thrones. I don't think it's going to be everybody shagging everybody. Everybody's killing everybody. Everybody's fighting everybody. Everybody's plotting against everybody. I don't think that's what they meant at all. I think they just meant Game of Thrones in the much the way that kind of ongoing storytelling and rich world building. I think that's really what they're going for. And also the fact that on Game of Thrones, nobody's character's safe. And I think that's kind of part of what they were saying. So I don't think it's going to be like Game of Thrones, but I think that's the kind of... I'm not quite sure how to put this. It's not going to be like Game of Thrones as Game of Thrones is, but it's going to be like Star Trek if it wanted to follow that kind of storytelling. If it's that's a sound bite to get people to watch, isn't it? Mm. Uh, you know, and it's, it's a buzzword to get people yeah. to watch, yeah. Oh, look, you know, so... They said that the Expanse when it was when it wasn't on yet. This is Game of Thrones in space. The Expanse is amazing, though. The Expanse is great. The Expanse is one of the best sci-fi shows in the last ten years. Agreed. So we're not expecting a battle of throne then. I don't yeah. think so. I think it'll be plenty <laughs> of action. I don't think we're going to be spoiled for action at all. But I think, unless, like you say, unless they're lying, and or and I don't think they're even lying. I think maybe. Maybe that unless they've misread their audience and this kind of storytelling they they do is completely off the mark for what we're looking for. I think there'll be a lot to like there, but again, you know, I don't want to prejudge it as bad, but I probably shouldn't prejudge it as good because at the end of the day, we don't have a lot to go on just yet. Maybe it'll suck. We don't know. There's always that possibility. Or it's maybe so it'll far. be the best Star Trek show ever. One thing we can be sure of, though. This is somebody, people out there who've never watched Star Trek for who this is going to be their TNG. This is going to be their Star Trek show. And that's kind of exciting. Yeah. And it has to kind of follow a little bit of the mould of the, um, the, the recent films because that's what general audiences will be more familiar with. And to be honest, I like the visual, the, I like the visual aesthetic of the movies. From the, the way they shoot it, the way they make it look, there's a realism and a grittiness to it. I don't know, grittiness is overused, but it feels real. 
um, and polished in a way that if you look at something from, if you look at one of the TNG movies, they don't quite have that level of realism to them anymore. I mean, again, they're very much a product of their time. So again, you know, things are just moving on. And and, and again, they say it in the trailer. I mean, Sarek says it to Burnham. You know, I can't, I'm paraphrasing, but, you know, change is life. You either change or, you know, either embrace change or change will do whatever to you. I can't remember the exact quote. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I wonder if that's kind of a challenge to the audience as well. I, I, I did wonder that. <laughs> I definitely did wonder that. I wouldn't be surprised if they put that in there for that reason. Yeah, um, at the end of the day, it's you're going to get these. You're going to get fans who are complete purists that, you know, would want this thing to look like the cage. Oh heck, yeah. And And you know what? I can understand that because at the end of the day, I would love, love to see a series that looked like the cage. No. (laughs) It's <laughs> just the sixties. You know what? No, I would watch it. I would love to see it. But at the end of the day, I ain't gonna sell. I know it's not gonna sell. I would sit and watch the hell that that to death. You know, I love the cage. The cage is a great, you know, a great piece of television. It, but it's very much a product of the time. And you know, the people that would tune in and watch that or pay money to watch that, there ain't enough people there to do that. Yeah, as much yeah. as I would, I would tune into it. It'd be watched by about ten people weekly, and they spend like millions on it. And <laughs> it'd probably be more than ten, you know. But even the fan films that uh, were based on uh, that aesthetic mm-hmm. have have seen their viewership slowly decline because people are sl- they're starting to get a bit. Uh, the The format is a bit samey now. It's it's been well, done. I think it's been done. Move on. I think the problem there is there are too many fan films using the original series aesthetic. Way, way, way too many. It's a saturated market now. Um, and to be fair, the only one that the one the big daddy of them all is continues, and they're the one that's getting most of the viewers. Let's face it. Well, absolutely. Um, and to be fair, they probably deserve it because they are producing good work. Mm-hmm. Well, mostly. Is the amount of fan uh, films and fan material that's using that aesthetic not? probably down to the fact that the sets are cheaper, you know, like the original series itself. Well, sets and stuff are cheaper to build that actually, way. I'm not sure that's, up to date. But I'm not sure that's true. I mean, in actual fact, if you look at the original series sets, they're still pretty complex things to build. They're not act apart from the curves, you get a lot more curves with TNG plus era sets. And there's ways around that. I mean, you don't have to produce completely accurate TNG era sets. But those sets are not really any more expensive to build than the original series ones. If anything, because a lot of them can be built up with kind of pr- printed transparencies and stuff. There's actually yeah. some corners mm, to cut so, there. Yeah. So, and to be fair, you're not the first person who made that argument. And I don't think it's an unfair argument. But actually, having seen a few of these things built, I don't think there's actually that much in it. You could always just go and film in a, bu- a brewery, you know, that's... Yeah, Take let's not reach. get started on that because it looks like shit. Um, I mean, one of the things I've noticed, and I think this is partly a generational thing, you've got the people who are big fans of the original series who have the disposable income to blow on fan films who kind of grew up with the original series and that's their Star Trek. You've got a slightly younger generation who are into TNG who maybe are getting to that stage now. So maybe you'll start to see more TNG sets being built and more TNG area stuff. I don't know. I'm speculating. Well, I've, I've, seen, I've seen some people uh, say if they had the mo- that kind of money behind them, they would uh, build a TNG era. If I had half the money, if I had a tenth of the money behind me that, can, say, Continues had, I would do that in a heartbeat. But I have no money... To pay for, and the other thing is America. People seem to have access to land and buildings and stuff a lot more easily than we do in the UK. And there's a lot more, more space, the, I guess. Yeah, they've got the, the, there's more to it. There's more <laughs> of it over there. Yeah, That's... but I mean, if I had those, if I had that money, I would certainly buy or rent a building and build sets in it and make polished, flashy TNG era fan films. But you know, realistically, I don't have that kind of money, and I can't do it. Just stay away from the season one uniforms. 
Yeah, let's. That's 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 good advice to anyone. Bandex. <laughs> yeah, good advice. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, t- season three onwards is the uh, is the way to go. Yes. Yes. Can't be. Post Nemesis is the way to go. Oh yeah, yeah that too. <laughs> yeah. So, back to uh, Discovery. Because that's the, the thing we're supposed to be talking about. Indeed. Oh, yes. Yeah, Sorry. <laughs> there's, I knew we were here for some reason. Uh, yeah, I know. Tangents. Tangents, the final frontier, as they say. <laughs> no one says that except me. But, um, yeah, so they made some updates, as we've kind of alluded to. The most controversial of which is probably the Klingons. Um, I don't mind the look of the Klingons here. I, I, you can, I can still recognise that the, the guy is a Klingon. I'm okay with it. Yeah. and Looks okay to me. And it's not the first time they've done it. They've done. I mean, they did it throughout TNG. They would tweak the makeup. I mean, it wasn't hugely noticeable, but they refined the makeup. I mean, from TMP, from motion picture to um, Star Trek Three, they changed the makeup. From the series to the motion picture, they massively changed the makeup. Um, and that wasn't a particularly popular thing at the time, I don't think. So you know, it's not the first time we've been through it. Maybe there'll even be an explanation for it. I don't know. I uh, hope not. Just just let us deal with it. It's fine. I, I'm happy to roll with it. But if they want to have come up with some explanation like these are ancient Klingons and they're an offshoot or whatever, I don't care either. I'll just go with it as long as it's a good story. I mean, well, it's, still- it's, as long as they don't sort of crowbar it in too badly and go almost fan service, go, okay, we've got to try and justify this and this and this and this, because then a lot of the episodes become full of them trying to backfill stuff that we don't really need explained it's, I agree. Like, like you say just just get on with it let, let us Absolutely. deal with it you know let's go sit in the meeting room for 10 minutes and explain everything well, <laughs> no. well look at it this way that's what they did in the motion picture they didn't spend <laughs> half the movie explaining why the Klingons look different yeah they spent no, half the movie doing very little else but you know well yeah maybe it would have been better no <laughs> I don't know I like that movie <laughs> <laughs> uh, I get the impression there's some kind of ritualistic aspect to the Klingons anyway there's it feels like they're they're doing some kind of mystical ritual thing I don't know what they're doing but well, that, I get that impression for, for, for me that looked like they were welcoming uh, uh, one of their dead yeah into, they were, they were war- what was it that um, it war- like that uh, in Worf, uh, in the death hell, the death hell. That's it. When they they open up the eyes and then scream scream mm-hmm. into um, into the air to uh, like warn Stovacor that a, a wire is on his way. Which is interesting. Uh, if they're keeping that kind of, um, if they're keeping those traditions uh, in these new Klingons, I could kind of get with that. Mm-hmm. Me too. Yeah, it's it's pretty clear that they're Klingons anyway. They've still got the ridges. They they look, I suppose, more alien than they ever have. I I, I must admit though, uh, someone someone um, someone posted on a Facebook somewhere that they, they, they looked a lot like uh, Rafa Sares from um, Galaxy Quest and his minions, and so do their ships as well. And I'm, I, can't, hmm. I must admit, I can't not disagree. Well, I always thought his indie reptilians looked like him. So <laughs> when I first saw them, I was like, "That's the Galaxy Quest aliens." But, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the I Klingon know. ships do look formidable, though. In this trailer, they look massive in comparison to the Starfleet oh, vessel. I know absolutely. that's probably not the biggest of Starfleet ships, but still, they look massive. It looks like it that the Starfleet ship gets its butt kicked, which is fairly typical. Well, we see two ships in the three ships. Yeah, in the trailer, one's called we? the Euro. There's the Euro- the one that's getting blown up. The hill yeah. is the Europa, because you see the hull name, the name yeah. of yes. the hull. <laughs> I wonder if that's prophetic in any way. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Um, then there's the the Shensu or however you pronounce it. That's yeah, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> yeah. That looks like it takes a bit of punishment as well. It does. I mean, it's really difficult to tell who what's getting blown up, what isn't. Uh, well, you, can d- you can definitely tell the one that we see zip off into warp um, is it's the Discovery. Discovery. Yeah. Because yeah. You, you see a close up of it at one point and you can see USS Discovery on it on, on its side. Mm-hmm. And I must admit, I'm not a fan so far of those r- hugely awkwardly elongated nacelles on it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it looks really great from some angles. I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure why. I probably agree with the nacelles at the moment. I don't know. Wait and see, I guess. 
the whole we'll design seems to be quite interesting. Um, but uh, I will agree to, to what one person said. The navigation reflector looks somewhat of an afterthought. It's just a point. Such a little dot. Mm. Yeah. We haven't yeah, had a good look at it yet anyway. Too much so. thought to that one, I must admit. Oh, well, there, there are video, there are images out there. Hmm. I'll wait to see it in the show itself, I think. I think it will be... uh, I'll either not like it or I'll like it, whichever. I mean, I still don't like the the J.J. Abrams design of the Enterprise. Neither do do I. Uh, I, You know what? Actually, I didn't, but it grew on me. I actually don't mind it now. I quite like the A. The A looks a little bit more um, in proportion, definitely. Yeah. And I think if they make another one, they'll refine that design a bit more. Oh, I think that's, yeah, half of the course, really, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I like the ship designs in this. They they look a bit yeah. Miranda-class-esque from some angles. Or one of them. Yeah, does. I quite like the Shen... The Shenzhou, Shenzhou. Shenzhou. I think <laughs> Shenzhou is actually how you pronounce it. Right. I quite like the Shenzhou design, since we clearly look, appear to be seeing more than one of them. Yeah. Hmm, I wonder what class it is. <laughs> yeah, well, it's something we haven't seen before, isn't it? it well, is. let's just, well, let's just hope that the um, the scaling is um, proper. And mm. they're not saying, this. look at the new Enterprise, it's 15 billion kilometres long, but, oh, it's yeah. only got, but it's only got three windows on the side of it. Yeah. <laughs> each, window, each window's the size of the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I just ignore that shit. <laughs> yeah, so do I. If I didn't, I would go nuts. <laughs> yeah, I think I think sometimes you have to take a bit of dis- distance from from stuff. You know, it's it's not real. Yeah, let's deal you with definitely it. do. <laughs> this was mocked up by in someone's computer. That that's what happened. It's not actually real. There, there are wor- other things worth getting annoyed about. Sacrilege! <laughs> How could you, Craig? Not real. I'm sorry, it was, to the fu- it was beamed from the future to Roddenberry's head, didn't you know that? That, that was it. He had this planned all along. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I used to be quite uh, quite a stickler for things like canon and consistency and all this kind of stuff. And then, I don't know, as time has went on, I've, I've gotten less bothered about it. You know, if you want to cast... If you want to cast a woman as the Doctor, go for it. If you want to, you know, if you want to race switch different characters, I have because, no problem yeah. whatsoever with a female Doctor. Bring it on. Yeah. Yep. It's not, not a the, problem with that. At it's all. not the sixties anymore. You know, it's let's let's move things on. And and this show's been getting a lot of flack for for having too much diversity, which is. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I, well, well, I, I think that's. That. I, I, I to be honest, I think that's largely being blown out of proportion. I think there's probably the people that, and I have seen people talking about that, but I don't think they're by any means. I think they're a very vocal minority. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it always is. Who really haven't looked outside their own bubble of privilege very much. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's always the vocal minority that gets the uh, the most press, whereas the silent majority who are quite happy with their how mm-hmm. it goes big, by nature of them being silent because they're happy. Yeah, they're overshadowed by the the, the it's, noisy. Lot. It's like a it's like that Family Guy joke about complaints, where it's like we received ten calls last night, and as you know, ten calls one call equals a billion people. So like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't. Yeah, I think um, I think Star Trek is the premier show for diversity, or at least it used to be. Then it started to be a bit too. It it's certainly too white, uh, Eventually, it used know. to be. It became a little bit too safe. Yeah. In hindsight, I mean, certainly Enterprise played it way too safe. Well, yeah, the only black guy got like ten lines the whole four seasons. He years. was, <laughs> yeah, a little bit flat. Yeah, no, well, he got an entire episode or two. Yeah, and they, they obviously were weren't paying attention. That's because yeah. the other actors needed a break. <laughs> yeah, come now. No, but they they had no interest in developing that character. No, nah, you know. They didn't. They... But then they didn't really have much interest in developing anybody besides kind of Archer, Trip, and to Paul. Yeah, they were the three that they were interested in, and the um, next generation wasn't heavily all that diverse, really either. No, not at all. I mean, you know, there, with the exception of Michael Dawn and Lavar, and they were yeah. all pretty much. I suppose Marina Sirtis is Greek, but 
<laughs> the Greek Londoner. Yeah. That, um, generally, they are pretty pasty, whitey types. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah. I suppose. And the female characters were not well treated initially. No. I mean, you look at Cupid, which is actually a great episode. The men are fighting with sticks and swords and things, and the women are hitting people over the heads with pots. And <laughs> when they get in a big fight, and you're like, really, really. This yeah. is ridiculous. You know, a few years later, Kieran Arise is kicking people's butts, but, you know, TNG. Women are hitting yeah, well, people with pots, you know. DS9 but, gets all the points for diversity, I think. DS9 yeah. did a great job. And to be fair, Voyage had made some efforts on that as well. They just didn't do as good a job of kind of realising what they were doing as they could have done. Yeah. But there was an effort there. They just didn't really follow through on it much. And as Garrett Wong keeps saying, they kept marginalising him for some reason. I know. But, yeah, so... And yeah, to be so honest, as an actor, I mean, he was... Fu- I mean, OK, I'm not saying he was Marlon Brando or anything, but as an actor, he was perfectly competent. So was Robert Beltran, but they never really gave them anything much to do. No. And Chakotay was embodied every single Native American stereotype mm-hmm. you can get your hands on. Well, Chakotay's character was really pretty, yeah, naff. <laughs> which is not down to the actor at all. I mean, that's what he was handed. Yeah. Um, it really became pretty much the Janeway and Seven show, and I guess the Doctor... Um, I really wanted Voyager to be more of an ensemble than it was, but, you know, it never did really go there. But yeah, I think um, one of the few white male characters on this show is, is gay, so, mm-hmm. you know, that's... I mean, it's not something you should make a big deal out of, because it should just be one of those things. That should, and I don't think they will. Yeah. No, they shouldn't. Um, they should treat it as, yeah, this is normal. And, uh, yeah, the at least the first captain we'll meet, she's Asian. Mm-hmm. Um, lead character is of mixed race and so on I mean I, d- I don't know much about the rest of the cast I, like Jason Isaacs he's uh, he's Jason Isaacs I suppose but yeah they've uh, I don't know I, th- I think they've not made a big deal in the marketing about how diverse they're being which is good because it's like look at us look at how clever well, we this are this is the thing I don't think they're being diverse for diversity's sake which is no. one of the things they've been accused of I think they've just cast realistically. Um, you know, it's a good mix of you know people you would meet in in the street, I guess, and that's yeah. a good thing. And uh, Chris, you'll remember from the the Spider Man podcast where Aaron was talking about um, the part of the marketing for that was look how diverse our cast is, and I think that's. I don't think they need to do that. You know, just just have it be there and let people just deal with it. Yeah, I agree. I think it's 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 one of those things. I think just let them get on with it. I mean, one of the other things I've been impressed is the the makeup and everything in this for the alien races doesn't look like it's been done to the cheaper side. I know on the on the TV sometimes they sort of have to scale down the budget from what they've done in the movies, but this seems to keep pretty strong with all the the alien characters. Yeah, where's all the forehead prosthetics? Oh, well, <laughs> these days um, you've got far better uh, resources and um, mock-up abilities. I mean, we've got 3D printing now, so that they, c- they, they can pretty much print off a mould very quickly uh, these, long, day- these days. So because of the methods have got gotten more advanced, it lets you do more with the same amount of money. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite surprised, especially with uh, Doug Jones's character, that... He, if he's going to be a series regular with that with that amount of makeup on all the time, it's going to be pretty immense. Well, did you see Doug Jones on the panel where he just like demonstrated how he was walking? Um, he yeah, was, he like, has walking hooves. awkwardly. Yeah, he has hooves. hooves. Yeah, it's kind of cool. But Doug Jones is a big prosthetics guy, you know. Look at Hellboy oh, yeah. or anything else he's been in. He just you know stick him in plastic makeup, and he's he, he's quite comfortable. He's- I mean, at the moment he's listed as 15 episodes, so he's going to be pretty much right, but... Yeah. yeah. One thing, one other thing I saw in the trailer, which you not mentioned much, which I really liked, I'm sorry, Harry Mudd. Oh, yeah, Rain Wilson as Harry Uh, Mudd. It's like, as soon as I saw him, I went, that's Harry Mudd. Oh, my God, that's great. (laughs) Quite excited to see him. Uh, Then I I liked uh, the Mudd episodes, particularly like Mudd's women, actually. As sexist as it was, I like how he's doing with Mud though, because he's always been a bit ridiculous. Yeah, well, it'd be nice to see if they're actually going to make him a little more than that. Yeah, I, th- I hope. And I hope guess they, they give him. I hope they give him some depth this time, because as it is, I really hate 
uh, the mod character. It, it's just ridiculous, as um, Craig just I said. I think he was always meant to be ridiculous, but you know, I'll be glad to see them give him some more depth. I always felt there was more depth to the character anyway, and I think Roger C. Carmel, you know, the way he played him, he hinted there was more going on there, but you know, the scripts just didn't give you a chance to see that. So he's a character I want to see more of. Yeah, so I'm um, excited to see where they take him. Maybe it would suck. Again, who knows? I suppose, ideally, he's a bit more like Han Solo, isn't he? You know, he's this kind of roguish what? figure that flies around on the fringes of society and get, and makes a living for himself, or like a Malcolm Reynolds type, or whatever, you know, that kind of mould. Mm. I think that's maybe what they want from him. I wonder, maybe. I'm wondering, he seems to be, um, from 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 the trailer, it seems like he's, he's in the know with what the Klingons are doing. Is he possibly responsible for the the Starfleet and the Klingon get-together, perhaps? Ooh, maybe. Maybe, yeah. He's, he's, he, it's some sort of business deal that's gone awry. Yeah, or he's just mixed up in the middle of it. Well, maybe accident. he's found the sarcophagus ship and is trying to um, find some way to profit off it and then Starfleet come along. Yeah. yeah. We still have no sense of story. You know, we know that, we don't. We know that no. stuff is going to blow up and that yeah. Klingons are going to be involved. And that's about we, we, we know that at least one Starfleet ship bites the dust. Yes. Yeah. And another one looks heavily damaged. Probably the Shenzhou. Yeah, yeah, you um, can't quite make out the name as you see the. the mm-hmm. That was that was epic. Seeing that um, it looks like it, it, the ship is um, it's ramming into something, so you can see this object rippling through the the hull, mm-hmm. and you can see the hull twisting and contorting as this object is going through it. That's cool. Mm. Yeah, and the visual effects yeah. look amazing as well. They do. But... They do. I mean, it was a far cry from the amount of criticism they got after that teaser of the ship they released last year. Yeah, yeah, indeed. I mean, I always thought that that was just a quick get something out. Um, oh. This is this is what it's possible. You know, here's something for you to look at. It was a little bit of eye candy. I, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think that's exactly what it was. But everybody was saying, oh, the, if this is the finished product, it's going to be crap. I'm like, mm-hmm. just get a life and just... Wait. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that's part of the reason why it's been delayed a little bit is that they've been trying to get the special effects just right, you know, spend time on the graphics because if they cheap out on it, it's one of those things that will sort of destroy its credibility later on. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I know, I know uh, somebody um, who got, um, who was told directly from someone on the production that the first five hours were utterly unwatchable and they've been completely re-edited, hence the delay. <laughs> oh. Interesting. How true that is. Is. How true that is, I don't know, but the person's never lied before, so... Yeah. And they've, they've, they've nothing to gain from it. Yeah. Um, who knows? I mean, we'll never know what kind of went on behind the scenes. Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, as long as what they release is good, I don't care what they may have released, as long as what they do release is good. Yeah, and we've got 15 episodes of this stuff, so uh, it's like I said earlier, I'm pretty sure the footage we've seen is from the first episode, maybe the first two. Well, well apparently, they've got, well, like I said, they've got the first f- at least five hours um, filmed, yeah. so it, it could be um, it could have, it could be that they've taken elements from several different episodes and put them together in one trailer to make you think it's one episode. Maybe. Could be anything, but... Um, I mean that's what trailers do these days, don't they? They they they, um, they show scenes that might not necessarily actually be in the film. Yeah, it kind of concerns me that they started with what twelve episodes, and now they've got fifteen. That suggests to me that they've come up with three episodes out their arse, and or you know, they decided they just wanted more time to expand their story. Yeah, yeah. But usually, when they're that get... happy with, and the studio's happy enough with what they're churning out, that they're happy to give them the money to do that. Yeah, usually when they add episodes at the last minute, they, at least in my experience, those episodes are like, yeah, it was well, probably better I, left. I don't think they were that far into shooting it when they added those episodes, though. But yeah, don't quote me. Who knows? No, it could, I mean, it, the, could, it could be a sign that they're they're trying. They're like, look, look we can't squeeze in this story arc in um, twelve episodes. We need 
two or three more. Yeah. To make it good. So yeah. it, I I would see that as a positive. Yeah, it's it's bizarre how long CBS have had this franchise and not made anything for TV. It's insane. Well, it's because the guy who runs CBS doesn't like Star Trek. <laughs> And that's from several different sources. He cancelled Enterprise because he didn't like Star Trek. Just like the Director General cancelled Doctor Who back in the mm. 80s because he didn't like Doctor Who. It was the first thing he did as soon as he sat down behind that desk. <laughs> and um, th- this guy, it's the first thing he did. And you knew he had no plans for Star Trek after that because he sold off all the stuff and he got, got all the sets bulldozed. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's that's the why that's reason why it's taken so long. Because uh, I, I, I saw I read in an interview one of the people who's behind the the, the power behind um, Discovery. Uh, it took quite a lot of wearing down of the uh, CEO to uh, finally let make him go. Okay, right, fine, make it. They were weirdly happy enough to um, to expensively remaster. The original series and next generation it's very strange I think that that wasn't uh, because it wasn't um, creating um, a whole new show that probably had a whole different kind of budgeting and yeah. was probably able to get passed through without um, mr. CEO's uh, say so that was about future proofing a show that's still profitable for them in reruns yeah. It was and for it, reselling on DVD, Blu-rays. Yeah, it was. It was. Che- it was cheaper to um, to to clean it up and send it out again. Yeah. So, in terms of this trailer, what are kind of people's highlights of it? Um, personally, for me, I, I you know, it's not all about action, but I thought the action looks it looks great. It looks really fast and dynamic, and it doesn't look like Star Wars, which is criticism I've had of. Certainly, the the first Abrams film it looked a bit Star Warsy in the way they were doing the action, but this looks a bit kind of it looks a bit more tactical, and it looks like there's some manoeuvring going on. And you know, I think I think you'll have the kind of back and forth of showing how skilled the characters are by you know shouting out tactics and having them take you know, having them on the go. I'm not talking about things like uh, you know evasive maneuvers pattern alpha, and then something happens and they win. You know, I'm thinking more they'll do something a bit more clever with it. You know, it would be clear what the captain's plan is, rather than that just, you know, sh- shouting out Greek alphabet stuff, and then and then they win fights. Um, and yeah, I really like the force field effects. Weirdly, I think they look so cool. Those are my highlights. I just like the whole thing. Actually, it felt like Star Trek to me, and it was exciting to see something new. Yeah, and I like the look of the characters. Sarek seems like a bit of a dick, but then Sarek, when we first meet him in Journey to Babel, is a bit of a dick, so that's okay. So yeah, that's 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 one character that hasn't changed. I James like Frame looks like he's doing a great job. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the uh, the fact that they've still got pointy ears and pointy <laughs> um, eyebrows. So they've not they've not changed they've not been changing things for the sake of changing things. Mm-hmm. So that's good. Yeah, plus yeah, people, I, be, like, people like be, Nick, I liked the entire the entire thing. Yeah. People will be familiar with the Vulcans from the uh, from the films anyway, so it's not a good okay. idea to change them. Seriously, if if, if anybody who's going to be watching this series well, isn't familiar with the Klingons as they <laughs> are, seriously, uh, the, what what rock have they been uh, hmm. living under? Come on, <laughs> everybody knows the Klingons to the point of to the point of the fact that it's actually become a bit of a cliche. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not so sure the audience will be as savvy about Klingons as you might think. Uh, I don't think they're as unsavvy as you think they might be. Might be. Who knows? But hey, it's changed. That's 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 just the way of it. Um, uh, Like that character says, you know, life is for change. So let's let's embrace it and get on with it. I'm I'm really getting annoyed by all these people that are saying, "Oh, I hate it," and I'm not going to watch it. Because uh, I hated uh, Voyager and I didn't watch it. Well, you're not a Star Trek fan then. Go away. Mm. Sign up for your free Netflix month and have a look. Just get on with it. And anyway, I've got Netflix already. It's going to be awesome. I'm coming back. F- I'm coming back from a, a holiday, and a couple of weeks later, I've got this to w- look forward to. It's brilliant. Yeah. 
Uh, Chris, do you have a, a highlight from the trailer? Uh, my highlight is kind of, I, I like how epic it seems in scale, even the when you see them down on the planet. You know, you see a nice massive wide shot. It looks like they've sort of taken what you normally see on the TV and just made it bigger, made it more of a, a film style I'm, I'm just glad to have uh, Star Trek back. You know, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. You know what, that's a good point, the scale. The scale just looks incredible. In, in, in the next generation, some of DS9 and a little bit of uh, Voyager, you could always tell they were on a stage or they were at Ayers mm-hmm. Rock. Uh, what? Well, no, what's, it's not Air's Rock. Vasquez what's it called? Rock. Vasquez Rocks. Vasquez Rocks, yeah, that's it. Uh, why, did, why did I say Air's Rock? I don't know. Anyway, that, that would you could always tell up. that they, it, was a, it was a very confined area that they were filming and there wasn't much background to be seen. But now with the advent of super high-quality CGI, they can give us the scale, as you quite rightly point out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, it actually appears on my 30th birthday. That's the day it'll be available to watch. So Neat. That's cool. <laughs> I know what I'll be doing that first, part, uh, first thing in that morning. Mm. I'll get, I, wonder how, I wonder if it's going to, if they're going to delay it like, um, like they do with so many things where the US gets it uh, and it's only a couple of weeks later that everybody else gets it. No, no, it, it comes out on the 25th of September. Internationally, so is that a definite international yeah. release? Yeah, good. Yeah, it I says so. um, it says on the trailer, twenty fifth of September. So oh, well, that Netf- doesn't mean anything. Netflix don't do don't do staggered delays of their own content. So, um, well, that's reassuring. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, it's definitely, also it definitely comes out here on the twenty fifth. Yeah. yeah, good. The I think because episode... it's on a digital platform as well. It's not sort yeah. of tied up with that sort of. It's also, issue. I think, I think, hopefully. Uh, Netflix are a little savvy with uh, that's the whole reason why there's pirating going on because people are sick and tired of waiting yeah. Yeah. for um, you know the US gets it and we have to wait six months before we get it I mean, oh, what no on earth wait, is that yeah. all about yeah that, I mean that's why I commute to America to watch all the DC superhero shows you know because mm-hmm. I can't be bothered waiting um, I mean it's, it's, it's changed now but uh, I don't know you give give them half a chance, and they might change it back again. But no, looks looks like it's uh, it's going to be a very very fun September because we've we've got the Orville coming out. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, that looks hilarious. Yeah. And then we've got Discovery coming afterwards. It's it's yeah. going to be it's a, it's a month to look forward to. Well, the apparently the first episode. I don't know if this is still true, but I think it's airing on like a CBS channel on the twenty fourth. So it's a couple hours before it drops on Netflix, I think. Oh yeah, so the, that way you you need to stay away from Facebook and and YouTube because there will be spotty oiks that are going to try and be the ones to get the scoop. It'll be quite late on. for us anyway. Well, says the person who wait, waits until three o'clock in the morning to watch a trailer. Hey, I did that once, <laughs> and it was for Spider-Man Three, and uh, I got to watch it once before before the website it was on crashed. So, <laughs> but I was one of like I was one of the few that got to actually watch it once, whereas other people weren't so lucky. Oh, what a golden age we live in, where we can you know <laughs> see it all online. I know. Five minutes later. Well, that was back in the that was you know I think I was what I don't know what year was that? Would it been like two thousand and seven or something? No, nah, before that. Ah, uh, the dark ages. Yeah, but I remember like yeah, I think it was like 2007. It was crazy, but uh, I remember um, or 2006. So YouTube wasn't as common as it is now. So it was literally on the, like, the Sony website, watching well, it in quick time. That's right. <laughs> it's, it's it's still better than the days of old when uh, we actually had to go to a big massive one day con to see the latest Star Trek, which was uh, shipped over on uh, tape. Yeah, from this from the states, and we would we would see it. We would see it a good what six months before oh, it was on yeah. Sky. Yeah. And then it was like Day of Honor or whatever it was called. The well, what, what was the racist early season TNG one? Oh, uh, Code of Honor. Code of Honor. That was it. Yeah. It's like oh man. Oh, yeah. I went to a con to watch this. Uh, uh, that was before my time. I remember watching like Next Generation. I was watching on BBC Two. I think. Uh, mm. You know, that's my earliest memory of watching it. I saw right. Code of Honor on a blockbuster rental. Wow. 
I don't think I watched TNG again for about a couple of years after that. <laughs> Talk about ancient blockbuster. Remember those? Yeah. It's not the best episode, to be honest. <laughs> no. Chris, what's your it first memory of watching Star not. Trek? Uh, my first was at uh, home. My dad had uh, tapes. So that that was that. Uh, VHS. Yeah, my the VHS that would come out. Your dad come had on. tapes. How bloody old are you? <laughs> what are you a child? <laughs> my, my um, I had tapes. <laughs> my my first memory is actually um, we had just gotten cable, and we had Sky One. Uh, we there was a mobile chip shop outside. We grabbed some lunch, some dinner. Sorry, sat down in front of the TV as you do on a Sunday night. And my mum flicks over to Sky One, and they're showing the original series. And I tell her, turn this crap over. <laughs> but I watch it, and then I watch them some more, and then I watch some more, and then I watch some more, and she, she gave, that was it, the monster uh, appeared. Imagine your mum had, had uh, ex- accepted your request and turned it over. How different yes. might your life be right now? I wouldn't be oh. sitting here, most likely, talking to you fine gentlemen. Yeah, turn turn left, as they say. Well, my first, my first memory is the animated series. <laughs> <laughs> Probably first run. How did UK. you survive that? I don't know. Actually, I can actually remember watching the counterclock incident, and it must have been I don't know mid seventies somewhere. I mean, if Code of Honor was enough to put you off the next generation for two years. How did watching the original, uh, the animated series, not put your hey, Star Trek into life? <laughs> it was aimed at me. Some of it's okay. Some of Fair it. Enough. Absolutely, there's some good episodes in there. But at the end of the day, you know, I was a kid. It was an animated series. I was into it. Fair enough. Yeah. So I think we've said about as much as we can about the this trailer. We haven't said and that much, really. But there's not much to talk about other than it looks cool. <laughs> you know. Um, so should we uh, come back for a flashcast on the first episode? I'll be reviewing it, obviously, but you know, a discussion let's will do it. deliver yeah, more let's insight. Do that. Yeah, sure. uh, the the evening of the twenty fifth, I suppose. If, if you know, that's um, jump on it. Depends when fun. we get to see it. We might not all get to see it at the same time. Indeed. Uh, hmm. It'll probably well, be later watching. on that we get to see it. I'll be oh, watching we, it first thing in the morning. So. We know you'll be watching it first thing in the morning, <laughs> but uh, I, I'll be working, so um, I'm probably as will I. Yes, so we're probably talking about the e- late evening of the twenty fifth. Well, which we'll is still the you. same day, same day, you know. Yeah. So I need time to edit the bugger anyway. So you'll be able to watch it about uh, <laughs> forty times by the time we get to see it once. Hey, it's my birthday. I've got other things to do. It'll uh-huh. only be like twenty times. Blow out the candles and then watch it for the second time. That's it. It's like <laughs> family are visiting. I'm like, guys, Star Trek. Like, yeah. Go away. No. <laughs> just turning off the Once phone. Once I've seen it four times, then I'll come out for lunch. <laughs> and while I'm at lunch, I'm just watching it on my tablet as well. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't put it past you. Yeah, good point. I can actually watch it on my tablet at work on my lunch break. Yeah, but I don't do that. Watch, break, though. watch it on the biggest screen you can. Yeah, oh, believe me, I will. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't actually believe that. All this chat about Dunkirk, watch it on 70 mil or whatever. Just watch it. Like As long as you see it. Oh, I'm look, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to go and watch that tomorrow. I'm really buzzed. I thought it was all right. I'm not a huge Nolan fan, but I thought it was all right. I've not yeah. seen it. I the think history, it was Spider-Man today. The history and aviation buff of me is really, 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 um, really, really looking forward to it. Fair enough. Um, so cool uh, so we'll do a flashcast on the first episode when it appears yes um, we could maybe cram in a flashcast about the Orville why not I don't know we'll see how it goes yeah that'll um, be fun because that appears first that was September 10th something is like that, that is that not yeah. f- what, what well uh, what is that going to be aired on uh, I think I'm going to have to book my flights to the US and watch it yeah via um Via certain things, yep, fair enough. 
Yes, by flying to the US and sitting at a friend's house to watch it. Yes. Indeed. Yes, yes that's that, what I do. Because that's totally what I'm going to do as well. <laughs> totally racking up these frequent flyer miles. But, you know. the, annoying thing, the annoying thing is it airs just as I come back. Ah. Could have watched it live. Never mind. Indeed. So, yeah, so we have these potential plans. Um, depends if it's worth talking about, which I imagine it will be. Good or oh, bad. I'm sure it'll be, I'm sure it'll be funny. Yeah. So does any, anyone have anything final to say about this trailer? I think we've said it all. <laughs> yeah. Stop with the hate and embrace change. Yes. Hashtag embrace change. Works for me. Yeah. Chris, any final tidbits? No, uh, same, same as you guys. Embrace change and I'm just glad to have it back. It's, it's uh, one of the favourite shows of mine, so I'm, cool. I'm looking forward to it. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for joining. Um... Thank you for having us. It's been a conversation, that's for sure. <laughs> awesome. Now get out of my room. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thus ends our flashcast. Um, if you like what you heard, then please do subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, or anywhere you can get podcasts. And join us on the next Neil Before Pod. Mm-hmm.